A big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I've got a number of GE Smart Z-Wave switches around the house, but I have a few switches that are not smart switches. They're just the dumb paddle switches. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I've taken one of those dumb paddle switches and I've added this Zeus Zen 51 relay. This is a dry contact relay. And this relay allows you to make that switch smart. So you can turn it on and off, turn the, the light or whatever is attached to it on and off with a uh, Z-Wave command or with the switch itself. This relay is an S2 secure relay, which means you can use the new S2 protocol with it, which means it's secure when it's communicating back to your Z-Wave hub. It is a Z-Wave Plus, which also means that it is a Z-Wave repeater, so it can extend your Z-Wave footprint as well. And this one will do up to uh, 100 to 240 volts, and it is a 10 amp resistive max load. Um, so you can put, and it talks about that in document, you can put the up to 10 amps of load on it. It comes with this nice little cheat sheet here, uh, and it talks about how to pair it. It also has QR codes for the various uh, hubs, so you can actually use one of these QR codes to get more information on how to pair it with your particular hub. In this case, it shows uh, Smart Things, Habitat, Home Assistant, and Vera for the different hubs. Uh, but I'll go through the process of pairing it up here in just a minute. Uh, what other specs can we talk about here? This relay supports uh, group one with up to five devices for lifeline communications and group two with up to five devices. It will send basic report and switch binary uh, report to group one and basic set command to group two when operated manually from the wall switch. You can send stuff using the wall switch to the Z-Wave network. You can set direct association to have the relay control another Z-Wave device independently of the hub by using group two. Uh, and that just depends on your setup there. Some more specifics on it. And it talks about those here right on the front of the article. If you want to read those on the article itself, model number is in 51, of course, 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 Hertz, which I talked about max or mi maximum load is 150 Watts for led lights or CFL bulbs and 960 Watts for incandescent bulbs. 10 amp resistive load and one half horsepower for motors. Operates anywhere from 32 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, zero to four degrees Celsius, uh, indoor use only. Let's take a moment to talk about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Take some time and invest in yourself and your personal growth. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start with courses in coding, data science, programming foundations and languages, and many others. There is something for everyone. Skillshare even has new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. I'm a lifelong learner, so Skillshare fits right in with that. I can add to skills I already have or learn something entirely new. Skillshare makes it easy because I can take classes anywhere on my computer or my mobile devices. One of my favorite courses so far is Arduino Road to Success. This class helps me to work on my problem solving and critical thinking skills, something that I find useful all the time when building out my home automation and IoT setups. And you can see from my videos that I do have times when I've got to do some serious problem solving to make things work the way I want them to do. The first 1,000 people to use my link or my code MostlyChris will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So get started learning those new skills or updating your current ones. Before we get it installed or included into our network, though, we need to make sure we are doing a couple of things in our Z-Wave network. Now, I'm using Z-Wave JS to MQTT. So if I go to my Z-Wave uh, JS to MQTT panel here, I have some options to set things up. Now, because I'm using S2, and this is the first S2 type device that I have installed in my network, there were some settings I didn't know I didn't have set up. And if we go to settings over here and we click on Z-Wave, there are four different keys, S2 unauthenticated, S2 access control, S2 authenticated, 
and of course S0 legacy. You don't wanna change the S0 legacy. That's your main network key. If you have secure devices already on your network, don't change that key, leave it alone. But you can click this little circular refresh button here for each one of these and it will generate a new key for you. Once you've generated these keys, you go ahead and save this page here to set, save all the settings. This allows you to set up S2 devices on your network because you have the two or the three S2 keys on your configuration. This will go ahead and restart your network, by the way. So when you click on save, you're gonna get a restart of your Z-Wave network to include this information in your configuration. All right, so once you have that done, this is the Z-Wave JS to MQTT control panel. And this is what I use and the reason I use it, it has a really nice interface to allow me to control things within uh, my Z-Wave network just from the UI. So I've got the, Z the Zeus Zen 51 relay installed in the wall here. Now, if you're not comfortable with electricity, you need to make sure that you are actually uh, getting an electrician to do this for you. And I followed the, the diagram that comes with the, the document here. So if we look at the document here, you can see that there's a diagram that explains how to install and wire this up. Again, make sure that if you're not comfortable with electricity, that you take care of this with an electrician. All right, so there's the actual device right there. And you can see here with the power back on that we have a LED light flashing slowly on here. So back on our Z-Wave control panel here, we have actions, manage nodes. We're gonna click on inclusion. That starts inclusion. Give it a name, dining, click next. We're gonna use default for our inclusion method. Click next. And then it's gonna put it in mode. We're gonna click this button three times. That puts the device in inclusion mode. The blinking light goes faster now. And then it starts inclusion, says now we have S2 authenticated, S2 authenticated, unauthenticated, and now it's gonna ask for this code. When you go to pair a device using S2, you're either gonna use the smart start, which is the QR code scanning here, or you're gonna be able to enter a key. The key is long, but typically you only enter the first, or the first five or six or seven digits. Uh, both of those are on this card right here, and this came with my device right here. It tells you all about it. The Zen, the zero device uh, specific key is required when you're pairing this with an S2 network. Don't lose this card, it says. Make sure in any event it has a place to write on here where you have this installed and what device it's on and what date you install it so you have the key. The pin is also available on the back of the device. So if underneath my finger here on the back of this device is the pin for pairing this device with the network. So there it is, smart start for the pin. And then if you don't have smart start capable network, you just use this uh, code off the card and it will let you install it that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter the pin from the card since we don't have smart start on my device here. I'm gonna go ahead and include it. And now we see node 53 has been added with security S2 authenticated. So it's now an S2 authenticated node in my network. And you can see that down here at the bottom. Okay, now we have the switch installed and paired. You can see it here in the bottom of my device list. I have 50, well, I'm at 53 now for the node ID for this one. And you can see here all the information. You can set a location, the name here. Now the name doesn't always translate over to Home Assistant in terms of the uh, device itself. So you have to go to Home Assistant to find out what it's called there. Uh, you control can control it here with the binary switch on and off. There's a transition duration you can set as well here. Uh, currently it's off. Uh, a bunch of parameters you can set here as well. These parameters are not labeled as to what they are here, but you can change them for specific operation of that relay, depending on what you're doing with the relay. And every environment will be different. You may want it to do something different than the default values and you would change those here. And then you can set custom configuration values with this parameter location right here. And then, of course, versioning, manufacturer-specific versioning, uh, scene control, and indicator lights. So there it is. It's installed, up and running. You can add this to your Home Assistant dashboard. You can do whatever you want to be able to control it. It is a really nice way to take a dumb switch and make it a smart switch, or a dumb device and make it a smart device. As long as you don't exceed the loading cap uh, capacity of the relay, uh, you can control all, all kinds of things with it. So let me know if you have any questions down below. Also put those comments down below. You can reach me on Discord. Uh, if you're not a channel subscriber, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. And also if you're not a channel member, you can join the channel member. Uh, you get it, uh, early access to videos sometimes and some other uh, access perks like that. So 
Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next video.